In many of my videos, I talk about how Donald Trump is on the verge of saying that he is the savior of the world, directly fulfilling the Bible prophecy about how the Antichrist will say that he is God. Now, I realize that many of you think that Trump has already done this, and indeed, he is saying very similar things, and is more than happy to repost images and memes on Truth Social that also portray him as the savior of the world. Now, personally, I do not consider it a fulfillment of Bible prophecy if Trump dances around this subject and kind of suggests here and there that he is the savior of the world. I'm looking for him to come out and specifically say, I am the savior of the world, in those words. However, anyone paying attention to how Trump talks should recognize that, at minimum, he is 99% of the way there. The only thing missing is him specifically saying that. However, there's another aspect of this that I haven't talked about, and that is how many in Trump's orbit those hardcore MAGA supporters, those self-proclaimed Christians who surround him, are in a way pushing Trump to say words to that effect. Let me give you an example. Here is a short clip from Trump's interview with Monica Crowley from earlier this week. And listen to how she suggests to Trump that he is the savior of America and the savior of Western civilization. Uh, before we let you go, Mr. President, let me ask you sort of a big existential question, because since the assassination attempt, you have spoken uh, more openly about God and your faith. Do you see all of this as a spiritual battle? I mean, of course, it's Trump versus Harris, Trump versus the regime, Trump versus the system. But more personally, do you see this as, because a lot of people believe you were protected that day and really throughout your life by the hand of God. Did you feel his presence that day? And do you feel the hand of God on your life? Well, I do because it's either the greatest miracle or you're the luckiest person in history because there was no way that that, you know, the, the shooter was in shooting terms, extremely close. Uh, my sons, who are shooters, good ones, they said almost impossible for a bad shooter to miss. And he wasn't a bad shooter. He was somebody that went to the range and shot and practiced, if you can believe it. But so it, it was and the, the turn of, you know, the events like bringing down the immigration charts, a chart that said how great the immigration was under me. And but I use it only about 20% of the time. It's always on my left and it's always brought down at the end so that I would be turned around at the very beginning of the speech when the shot was fired and flip around just so that the bullet, you know, grazed me as opposed to really got you uh, is, is a miracle. And there is something, I, I think, i tell you what, I, I know people that became believers because of this event, and they weren't believers. And no, mm -hmm. I, it enhanced my belief. I think it enhanced. I mean, if that's, I think that's basically what you're asking. It, no, it enhanced because it's it's amazing that I'm talking to you right now. Actually, mm -hmm. well, we're all praying for you and your protection, and we absolutely are in a spiritual war. This is good versus evil, God versus the enemy. However, yep. you want to look at it. But there's something much bigger going on here, and you are leading the charge on the good side, Mr. President. And, I, you know, I say this all the time. To have the weight of this responsibility of saving the United States of America and, by extension, the West, which is in collapse, to have that all on one man's shoulders has got to be very heavy and has got to be very profound. So I really appreciate you saying that, you know, you, you really felt God in that moment. You feel God in your life because, Mr. President, as strong as you are, and Lord knows you're the fiercest warrior we have, we've ever had, no man can do this alone. 
My point is that all of these proclaimed Christians surrounding Trump are constantly putting this in his mind that he could indeed have this grand mission from God, which includes saving the entire world. And it's very possible that Donald Trump on his own would not have thought of himself in those terms. And that is because, while he may occasionally reference God, it's often in the abstract a generalized idea of a higher power. You won't hear him say anything about Jesus unless he's reading off of a teleprompter, or if it's a pre-recorded message at Christmas. When he speaks off the top of his head, which he obviously enjoys doing and can speak for an hour uninterrupted, you will not hear him say, Jesus Christ. And that is because Donald Trump does not see Jesus Christ as his Savior. He does not seek God's forgiveness, and if one doesn't seek forgiveness for their sins, they don't need a Savior from those sins. As such, Trump may want more power and more glorification for his ego, but the concept of being the savior of the world is largely being fed to him by those Christians in his orbit, who are constantly suggesting an extraordinary role for him to save the entire human race. And of course, when we talk about a man with such an extreme ego like Donald Trump, these type of suggestions to him will take root. He will keep moving further and further towards that day when he will stand in the temple of God and proclaim himself as God, as the Savior of humanity. And a big reason why that day is going to happen is that many, many Christians are helping to push him in that direction. The Christians in Trump's orbit are feeding that immense ego of his, and they will continue to do so until the day that Trump betrays them.